Judgian blast. All rise. Here comes the judge. Stan tries this one. Right field. That's deep. Flashes back. 49 is out of here. Sanchez, a two-run double. One of the greatest rallies I've ever seen. They have a 6-4 lead. Another base hit for Didi. Didi Gregorius is now three for three. Swung on, there it goes. Deep right. It's bye-bye birdie in the right field seat. Ball game over. Yankees win. The Yankees win. There's no way you can't think that the Yankees are the team to beat in the American League. That's not going to make Houston happy. Woo, a very bold statement by Mad Dog on MLB Network yesterday. Funniest part was, caught the attention of Justin Verlander. He said, hmm, I can think of a reason. No love lost between Chris Russo and Justin Verlander on this Valentine's Day. Hey, everyone, welcome to 1225 Live. I'm Alexa Dat. Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you so much for celebrating it with us. And we're going to talk a little bit more about these comments. Richard Justice is going to stop by to analyze them. He's also going to tell us what the Cardinals need to do to close the gap now that the Cubs have signed you, Darvish. Also, the Yankees are keeping tabs on Mike Moustakis. And we see that the Diamondbacks are still trying to sign J.D. Martinez, how that could all potentially work out. We will talk about it with Richard Justice. We're also going to have some swift justice with Richard as he answers some of our rapid fire questions. So we're going to make some baseball love connections as well on this Valentine's Day. So excited for you to join us and uh, come along for this awesome journey. So uh, we're going to start the show today like we do every day with Danny Wexelman. And uh, Danny, happy Valentine's Day, man. Happy Valentine's Day, Lex. Are you excited for today's show? It's a lot of love. There's a lot of love happening today. We're yeah. going to be talking about spring training, and we're going to be talking about uh, their Valentine's Day plans over there in Florida and Arizona. And uh, the best part, too, is on Facebook, if you guys are watching, it says, let Richard Justice woo you with some early 2018 predictions. So we just have the most gushy, lovey show ever today. Oh, yeah, that's coming up in just a little bit. But first, we saw some fun photos from spring training. This is our favorite photo of the day so far. Yes. Hello, Dallas Keiko getting ready. He's Listen, looking good. This is going to be an awesome rotation this year. I'm excited to see all of these guys. A full season of Justin Verlander there in Houston with Garrett Cole now, Lance McCullers, Charlie Morton, Colin McHugh, Brad Peacock. However, this rotation ends up all working out. But uh, having uh, Keiko there is going to be pretty uh, pretty big for them and excited to see him this spring. Yeah, it looks like the beard is still intact as well, so there's no confusion on who Dallas Keiko is. Yeah, that's for sure. All right, like we've been doing all season and all off season, we are going to predict who we believe are going to win each division. And today we are turning our attention to the NL Central, Danny. I'm ready. Uh, yeah, your team is in this division, so that's let's right. see how this all is going to pan out. Uh, in case you forgot, let's go ahead and throw it back to last year and remind you how this division finished last year. And this was was pretty interesting uh, how it all uh, finished out, right? The Cubs won the division, obviously, mm -hmm. and uh, they went on a little bit of a run in the postseason. Yeah. Uh, but they obviously had some uh, tough times after beating the Nationals, getting through the Dodgers. That's so right. we'll see uh, how they do this year. But remember, the Brew Crew were one game away from making the postseason. Yes, they were. And then you had the Cardinals three games behind them. They finished second and third in the division standings, respectively, followed by the Pirates and the Reds, as we know. But grand sweeping changes to almost every team in the division this offseason. Remember, the Pirates traded Andrew McCutcheon and Garrett Cole. So we're going to have to look at this division in an entirely new light as we make our predictions here, Danny. And that's kind of where I'm starting, a okay. brand new light. But even as we look at this division in a brand new light, yeah. I still think the Cubs are going to win the division. Do you? And yeah, and I do. I have a lot of faith in this team. And, you know, listen, they're not going to win it by a landslide. It's not going to be one of those no. things that they're just going to be handed the no division way. crown. There are teams that are gunning for them, specifically the Brewers and the Cardinals. Right. But I still do believe when it's all said and done that the Cubs end up winning this division. I was a little shaky at first okay. because they lost Jake Arrieta, John Lackey retired, Wade Davis, free agency. But then once they brought in Brandon Morrow and you Darvish, I was like, oh, come on. This is going to be it. This is going to be the year because you Darvish has been just a strikeout machine right. in the majors. Plus, you have Anthony Rizzo, who had a fantastic on-base percentage, one of the best of his career last year. you got Chris Bryant, 2016 MVP, who's going to build on his 2017 season. Javier Baez, who had career highs and home runs and RBI. I mean, this unit has, you know, been together for a while now, right, even though they're right. young and they know how to win. I mean, Danny, come on. Oh, going my God. The Cubs are going to win the division. It's not even, uh, it's not even uh, you know, a, 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 a 
uh, something to debate in terms of who wins, but it is going to be a close call. It's a debate, and I'm here to debate you okay. right now. Now, Let's listen, go. it may be because I didn't have any chocolate this morning, <laughs> but I'm going with the Brewers. It's not the sexy pick, but they're legit. Let me give you a couple reasons why. Let me convince you, okay? Christian Yelich, Lorenzo Cain, Domingo Santana share that outfield. It's drool-worthy, and Shomingo, as he's affectionately called, <laughs> broke out this season with 30 long balls. And he's going to be led by those two veteran guys. Travis Shaw also broke out after coming from the Red Sox. He hit 31 home runs. Eric Thames, we love that guy. He had a rocky season, but it all averaged out for him. Their rotation is not full of sexy names either, but those guys, they limited the long ball and they limited their walks they issued to their NL opponents. Don't forget about Orlando Arcia. That guy is just as good as Addison Russell and Javi Baez, and he's going to be the star of this team to help them lead the way. And like you mentioned, they were one game out of it. They were only six back when the season came to a close. They were right there pushing the Cubs, and I think that if they can stay healthy and they can outlast, that they're going to get that top spot. Huh, that's that's what be, I think. Listen, it's going to be a, a race to the finish. I do believe that. The Cardinals will be in that mix as well. This they is will. Be one of the best divisions to watch all season long. I'm a little curious about the health of Jimmy Nelson and how he comes True. back from that shoulder injury, so we'll see. But uh, a lot of excitement there in the NL Central. But I love it. Bold predictions here I'm on this excited. Valentine's Day. That's right. Uh, let's get a little bolder here as we talk about Valentine's okay. and uh, talk about some Valentine's we have here from our 1225 family uh, to you. And uh, this one, the Noah Syndergaard Valentine. By the way, if you want to print this out and give this to your Valentine, whether they're a Mets fan or just really into baseball, I know a guy who will make you smile this Valentine's <laughs> Day. Uh, he's looking good there. You know, maybe uh, I might print that out for you, Lex. What about this he's one? He's not even smiling, yeah. Danny. <laughs> well, it's fine. It's okay. I'm smiling on the inside, though. From Chris Coughlin, I'm head over heels for you. What do you think? This yeah. Over Yadier Molina, that infamous jump. I would print this out for somebody for sure. This oh is God. amazing. One of my favorite plays from last year. So. so great. Yeah, why not have it uh, carry over to 2018? My heart's racing, Lex. It's time for the question of the day. Okay. We want to know from our friends on Facebook, convince us to love your team on this Valentine's Day. Why should we love your team? Sell it to us. Give us the best reason why. And we already have some coming in. I want to read you an example so you know what we're looking for. Renee said, you should love the Angels because they have the best player in baseball. And his name is Mike Trout. Oh, Pretty good it. reason. Okay, that's I'd, a great reason. I'll take that. So let's, we're going to collect those and read them at the end of the show. Yeah, let's get some, uh, some baseball love coming uh, towards us here on Facebook. Yeah, that'd be awesome. All right, uh, time for us to welcome in our guest, Richard Justice. As we said on Facebook, he's going to woo us here on this Valentine's Day with all sorts of baseball info, Richard. But uh, hey, first, before we get to some of those topics, I heard you have something for Danny and I for Valentine's Day. Whether you are fully aware of it or not, uh, we have a little something that our crew decided that you should give us for V-Day. And uh, <laughs> here it is. <laughs> Are you in the outfield, Richard, because you're an angel? Now that is good. Now that is from the heart. I was hoping that would be Joey Votto's picture up there, but I'm good with that. <laughs> very good with that. Well, thank you for that, Valentine's, uh, Richard. Yes, that was very nice you're of you. You're welcome. Really That's from the it. heart, too. Yeah, absolutely. We know it. Thanks, Richard. All right, Dan, we'll check out uh, in, in just a little bit. Uh, as we start to talk a little baseball here, Richard, you wrote about how you believe the Cardinals are going to answer the Cubs after they sign you, Darvish. What can the Cardinals do? What do they need to do to close this gap now in the division? Well, you know, that's the silver lining of this slow offseason is that there's still lots of players out there. If I'm the Cardinals, I got to answer. Look, the Cubs were already going to finish in front of them. Now they've widened the distance a little bit with the signing of you, Darvish. But so where, where are the Cardinals' needs? There's the ninth inning. Greg Holland is out there. He's a proven closer. He's a couple of years removed. Uh, I mean, he's coming off a 41 uh, save season. You go back the last three years, he's as good as there is. And the other guy, you know, maybe the most puzzling guy for me this offseason is Mike Moustakas. I would sign the guy in a heartbeat. Now, there's a lot of this is my bias because I know the guy. I know how conscientious he is. I know how much they love him in Kansas City. But if you were going to look at the, the Cardinals lineup, and it's been completely rebuilt in a year, you would say, hey, third base is a place they might be able to upgrade. They tried to get Josh Donald. And they try to get Manny Machado, but Mike Moustakas is right there for the taking. And I'm thinking, you know, you finish behind the Cubs back to back years. You may finish behind a third straight year, but you want to put yourselves in position to be playing in October. This is going to be a really interesting division, Richard, as you heard Danny and I yeah. just talking about it. She thinks the Brewers are going to take the division, and I say the Cubs. What do you say? 
No, I, I think the Cubs are still the best team. You know, lots can happen. And like you said, I want to see Jimmy Nelson. And also, the Brewers' work is not done yet. I mean, they are shopping for at least one starting pitcher, maybe two. They're one of the few teams they could trade with Tampa for Odorizzi or for Chris Archer and, and not decimate their farm system. And then they have the money. They've been pretty honest about it, the fact that they have the money to go out and get, name it, Arietta, Alex Cobb, whoever is left out there. Um, yeah, they're in a they're in a great spot, to, to, and they've already had a great off season, uh, you know. And I tell you what, and everything is connected to every the other little thing. Cincinnati's a team to keep an eye on with Homer Bailey coming back, with Brandon Finnegan coming back, and, and with the experience the young guys got last year. That division is going to get really interesting in a hurry. We got a fan question from John, who's watching us on this Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, John, by the way. He wants to know, speaking of the Cardinals, any chance they sign Lance Lynn, or is he more likely to sign elsewhere? Yeah, I think they're looking offensively and bullpen right now. I think they like the rotation they have. I think they like the depth they have down into the system. And that's one of the reasons they haven't signed Greg Holland, is that John Mosellic feels, okay, we're going to start the season with uh, Luke Gregerson pitching the ninth inning, and then we're going to have Alex Reyes at some point maybe Flaherty at some point, Jordan Hicks. They have a bunch of power arms in the bullpen. And I think the way John Mozalax looked at it is our dollars best spent would be for a bat, not for somebody to pitch the ninth. The other side of that coin is you're going to be playing in September and October. You know how what it's like in those games where every out is a, is a battle to get. You want a guy that's been there before, a guy that's done it before. I don't know that you want to put kids in that position. All right, sounds good. Richard, no love lost between Chris Russo and Justin Verlander. Mad Dog yesterday on MLB Network had some very interesting comments. He was talking about the Yankees and said, there's no way you can't think the Yankees are the team to beat in the American League. Where Justin Verlander heard that, he said, uh, I can think of a reason. If these two teams <laughs> met in the postseason right now, Richard, who wins this series? Well, if they met in the postseason, it would probably come down to another game seven the same way it did in last season. But uh, look, here's how, how can you measure it? Uh, the Astros have a better rotation. Uh, the, there's only one guy in the Yankee rotation that could crack the Astros rotation. That's Luis Severino. Uh, and I don't care. I know. Look, I know. I love those two guys, Stanton and Judge and Greg Bird added to that mix. And, you know, in a full season of, of those three guys together is going to be fascinating to watch. And the Yankees did lead the majors in homers last year. But the Astros lineup is better and it's deeper. So there's your rotation and your offense. And the bullpen, if Dylan Batances bounces back, then you could say it's a coin flip or the Yankees are better. I think in the ninth inning, the Yankees with Chapman are certainly better. But that's that's where it stands right now. The, the bottom line is, though, you know, it's, it's a great talking point for, for, for Doggy. But these are two of the three best teams in the American League. And all three of them, including the Indians, all three of them are going to be playing in October. And hopefully we have as much fun next October as we did last October. Oh, absolutely. That's really, uh, that'd be the best gift on this Valentine's Day. If you could guarantee me that, that'd be sure, that'd be for, for sure. All right, talking about the uh, Diamondbacks, they're exploring creative ways to re-sign J.D. Martinez. You know, they don't want to commit long-term because they don't feel like that would, uh, you know, enable them to hold on to Paul Goldschmidt. Do you feel like the Diamondbacks able, are able to get this done? Or do you feel like, you know, maybe the Red Sox uh, are able to, or maybe there's a mystery team in there? What happens with J.D. Martinez? Well, I don't see it getting done in, in Arizona. Look, their payroll has already gone from 93 to 125 in this offseason. Nobody wants to hear that part of it. That's that's the highest payroll they've ever had. And they've committed for this season of almost $50 million to Zach Grinke and Yasmani Tomas. Yasmani Tomas needs to play left field for them. And I know he's coming off a disappointing season. He's two years removed from hitting 31 home runs. Uh, the only way this gets done is if J.D. Martinez is so ticked at the Red Sox that he just says, hey, I'm going to take a one-year deal, and I'm going to take what you can give me, and I'll, I'll come back there because he did love it. He loved playing with Goldschmidt and Pollock and those guys, and I understand that. It's a great place to, to play, but financially makes much more sense in Boston. And then, like I think you've talked before, Alexa, you know, you, you, you think one of the things that's holding it up is that the guy wants to play the outfield, but he doesn't want a DH. And I, and I can understand that. But, you know, we're almost four months into this market, and that's your offer. That's the offer. The market has dictated you're going to the Boston Red Sox. So unless you're really mad, go to the Boston Red Sox. Yeah, because you wouldn't advise him to take a one-year deal. That wouldn't be uh, – I don't think what anyone would really advise him at this point, and I, I'm assuming that's what his agent's telling him too. Sure. And, and look, 
you're going into this historic market next year. Now, we don't know. Like one of the things I've been thinking is that if you're a 30 something player going into next year's market, seeing what the market was for 30 somethings this year, if you're Josh Donaldson, if you're Adam Jones, you say, I want to get it done with the team I'm with now. Now it's different with Machado and with Bryce Harper because they're, they'll be 26. But I don't think the one thing you want to do is go into that, get into that market and try to elbow Josh Donaldson and, uh, and Manny Machado and Bryce Harper into a, into a, a deal. It's going to be crazy. Yeah, that's for sure. I'd want nothing to do with uh, all of that. All right, Shohei Otani arrives at Angels camp creating all kinds of buzz. He took a couple swings, and uh, he also threw, uh, played some catch with his interpreter. Uh, when will the Angels determine whether he's going to be successful as a two-way player for him? Will it be in spring training? Will it be you know early in the season? When will it be? Yeah, I think it's going to be day to day. They have a plan now. It's just you knew with Billy Epler and Mike Socher they were going to have a plan. And the plan is we're going to have a six man rotation. We've outlined this many at bats for you, this many starts for you. This could be a situation where the guy hits, pick a number, 15, 17 home runs, wins 12 games, and is the American League MVP. I mean, stranger things have happened. We're, we're going down a road we've never been down before. I mean, I mean, literally, it was done 99 years ago, but really, Babe Ruth only did it one year. Uh, so we don't know how it's going to work out. He wants to do it. But I think the Yankees, I mean, the Angels also made it clear that they see him as a pitcher first. There is no question that he's a top of the rotation type starter. And we're going to, as for the at-bats, we're going to work those out at the best we can. No question this guy is going to be exciting uh, regardless of where he is on the field. John Heyman is reporting that the Yankees are keeping tabs on Mike Moustakis. Is there any sort of a chance that this happens? Or, you know, do you, could you not see these both sides being able to work this out? You know, um, I think it's a possibility. But I also think they're very intrigued about coming in and looking at those kids. Miguel Andujar and Gleyber Torres. I mean, these are two of the best. I mean, Torres in our MLB cut, uh, pipeline is the number two prospect overall behind that Otani guy. And so, I mean, that's as close to can't miss as you can get in this game. So I think the Yankees want to look at all those guys. But Mostakis is the guy that most puzzles me about this, this free agent market. I mean, I would sign the guy in a heartbeat. If I'm the Royals, I'm trying to bring Mostakis and Hosmer back, and I'll worry about working the kids in later. I, I just don't get it. You know, he, the criticism of him in Kansas City is that the guy cares too much. He's been too conscientious. There's been days where Ned Yost has said to say to him, no, you go home. You're not playing today. And because and, if you let him, uh, he'll be in the cage every day at 2 o'clock. I, I and he's coming off a really good year. He learned to elevate the ball and all that the way some other guys did. I would sign him in a heartbeat. I don't get it with him. Yeah, caring too much sounds like a good problem to have in this case. Yes. So, yeah, I agree with you. All right, the Giants, Phillies, and Red Sox all interested in free agent reliever Tony Watson. Which destination do you believe is the best for him? Well, I think the Giants are going to have a uh, – let me shut my door here. <laughs> My dogs are celebrating now. Uh, oh, I love your dogs. Day. My dog does that all the time, too. It's so obnoxious. Uh, look, there are no bad answers for this. But it's somewhat, Tony Watson needs to reinvent himself. So where's the best place to do that? Who's the best manager in baseball at managing the bullpen? Bruce Bochy. Go to the Giants. They're prepared to win. They need him. He would be an important part of that. Um, can't miss. And, it's, oh, and that's a pitcher's division, too. Richard, by the way, uh, all dogs and any dogs are welcome on this show. So uh, <laughs> don't, don't ever worry about that because I'm a, a dog lover. All right, we're going to do a rapid fire segment we call Swift Justice. Right. So I'm going to give you a couple of statements here, a couple of questions, and you let me know what you think. and maybe, maybe like a, a sentence answer uh, based on how you yeah. feel about these questions. All right, first one. The Nationals, Dodgers, or Cubs have the best rotation in the National League? Uh, Dodgers because they have the most bodies and they do it a different way than the Cubs. The Cubs are looking at it five or six starting pitchers, same as the Nationals. The Dodgers believe in eight or ten, but they're beginning with Clayton Kershaw and Rich Hill, so that's pretty good. They have depth and they have, they're really good. All right, who was going to hit more home runs in 2018, Mike Moustakis or J.D. Martinez? Well, unless J.D. Martinez takes the year off, he's going to hit more. He historically has hit more. That's his game is hitting the ball out of the park. Some of it will depend on where he signs. But, you know, can you can you imagine him hitting hitting home runs, banging balls over the green monster in, in Boston? And also did pretty well in, in, uh, in Arizona, too. I think it's J.D. Martinez. All right. 
the Indians or the Nationals will hit for a higher average in 2018? Uh, I think the lineup, the Nationals lineup is scary good. Uh, you know, I, I don't know that, you know, r runs, home runs and all those things may be the, def the thing that defines them. But I, I think the Nationals, other than maybe the Astros, the Nationals have the deepest lineup in baseball. And I think they will hit for a little higher average. If you're a manager, you would like to have the lineup card for either one of those teams. Yeah, absolutely. This is the year for the Nats. All the pressure is on them. All right, the Cubs or the Red Sox starting rotation will have a lower ERA. Uh, the Cubs, and I'm not saying, you know, if Rick Porcello and David Price bounces back, those are big question marks in Boston. Uh, but that's the American League East, and that's a tough that's a tough division to pitch in. So while the Red Sox may feel just as good about their rotation as the Cubs do about theirs, the Cubs probably number-wise will be a little bit better. Yeah, and I believe you, Darvish, will definitely help with that low ERA uh, as it all settles out. All right, which team will win more games, the Marlins or the Royals this season? Now, I think the Royals are not that far away. I think they're going to win a little bit more games. I think they're both teams will be fun to watch. And I think the Marlins, don't laugh at me when I tell you this, I think they're going to be great fun to watch. This is a baseball man's dream, just to run your young talent out there, watch them succeed and fail and succeed. And when trouble hits, bring in more, just turn the whole year into a tryout camp. They're going to have such, they're going to play with such energy that they're going to be a joy to watch. I don't know how many games they're going to win. Royals are going to win more games, you know, but they have more established guys like Sal Perez and Alex Gordon. But uh, I think both are going to be fun to watch. Who is more likely to win the NL Cy Young Award, Max Scherzer or Clayton Kershaw? Ugh, well, they win it every year, don't they? One of the other wins it every year. I think they've won five out of the last seven or something like that. I, I, I just it, it, well, that is really a tough one. I'm going to take Clayton Kershaw because he is the best pitcher of the generation. And while you there wouldn't be anybody else to pick. But on opening day, go with the chalk. All right. Sounds good. I'm excited to see him pitch this year. It's going to be a lot of fun. One thing before we let you go, Richard, uh, we want to send our condolences to the Indians organization on the passing of uh, Terry Francona's father, Tito Francona. And uh, our MLB.com's Jordan Bastion, who covers the Indians, tweeted out this photo from back in 1963. Tito Francona, who's second from the right there, and then Terry, who's fourth from the right among all those kids, uh, were together hanging out in the uh, dugout there in Cleveland. So I thought that was a pretty remarkable photo. Any memories you have of Tito Francona? Yeah, he lived a wonderful life. 15 years for nine teams in the big leagues. Took off two years to go to the Army. Um, but the one thing I remember about him was he was a teacher. He was beloved. But you learn a lot of guy about a person, about a man, a woman, about how they raise their kids. And the one of the things Tito, Terry Jr., uh, Terry said about his dad was, when he would come back from playing, you know, Terry was a really good player. He was on Team USA, played at the University of Arizona, all that. He said, never once did he come in and ask me how I did. What he wanted to know was the fundamentals of the game. Did I play the game right? Did I have fun? And he said, if I answered both those questions, yes, then he was a happy dad. It didn't matter if I won or lost. It didn't matter how many hits I had. It was just, did you do things right? And did you have some fun doing it? And I... You know, he, he spent the last years of his life in the Parks and Rec, Rec's department uh, in his hometown there. And I, I just think about that. And, I, I, you know, he raised a great son and he lived a wonderful life and had the love and respect of many people in this game. What an awesome memory. Thanks for sharing that with us, Richard. And happy Valentine's Day. I appreciate you sharing, us, uh, sharing with us a little bit of uh, love and, and love for baseball on this day. Thank you. Thanks, Richard. All right, Danny, uh, as we continue to celebrate Valentine's Day here on the show, yes. why not ask people what they love about their team? That's right. What do you love about your team so much that we should also love your team? We yeah. have a ton of answers, but keep them coming in. We're going to read those very, very soon. All right, sounds good. Uh, staying in the spirit, we have a couple of Valentines from uh, players here that we want to send out to you in the baseball <laughs> world. You complete me. I love this. You complete me. By the way, I love that he was wearing this plaid long sleeve shirt underneath his Cubs jersey when he was introduced. It was pretty cute. Dude, I totally saw that, and I thought the same exact thing. This is from me to you. <laughs> Bartolo Colon, do you think I'm sexy? Yes and yes. I'm not going to sing the rest of that song. I'm checking all of the boxes. I love all of that. Okay, now I have a Valentine for you. My left eye is brown, my right eye is blue. It's Valentine's Day, and I love you. Yes! Max! <laughs> From Mad Max. This is the best. I'm sure uh, your wife Erica had something to do with this as well. <laughs> uh, From both of you. 
How about, uh, Danny, I got one for you. I heard, I heard you like chocolate, but I'll be your favorite Reese. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> I love you, Danny. Look, this is so much love. Amazing. My favorite Reese. Is it supposed to rhyme with peace? I have no idea. Or what like a is. Reese's Pieces. I think That's probably it. that. I think probably that. It's like Reese's Pieces. You just like get chocolate thrown at you at all angles after you gave it up yesterday for 40 days. Yeah, That's I think that I'm going to turn into a piece of chocolate eventually in my life. <laughs> One day. All right, um, last week uh, on the show we told you if you wanted to spend your Valentine's Day in the most special <laughs> way possible, you get the A's mascot to uh, send your Valentine Day love something pretty cool and keep it filled. He did it. He came through. Yeah giving out some awesome valentines. I love when the mascots do this, going around. That looks like that looks like a cookie and flower basket. Those are flowers. This is really cute. I also might be kind of terrified if I wasn't given previous notice that a giant elephant I come into my office. Completely 100% agree, but yeah. it may make for a much better video, so I don't know if I'd feel too bad. Yeah. Uh, I gotta say, the uh, Tigers are missing Justin Verlander a little oh. bit. Did you see this story, this back and forth on Twitter? Yeah. The Tigers reported this week, and you know, everyone's just really missing JV. Missing their guy. The reporter was looking around for Justin Verlander, and Justin Verlander was basically like, I don't know, <laughs> uh, you know, ask anyone if they've got number 35. Daniel Norris was like, can you just keep it to yourself? <laughs> that was my best part, because he was just like, he was like sad and emotional, all the feels at the same time. And then Michael Fulmer chimed in and was like, uh, I may or may not have asked for a number change. <laughs> Hashtag kidding, like don't everyone get the panties in a twist, but that's kind of uh, how everyone was feeling because he was in camp for them for 12 seasons. That's mind blowing. And to me. you know, accomplished so much there in Detroit. So the fact that he's not there this year, it just feels different. It feels weird. And all these guys are kind of looking around, waiting for him to walk in, because I'm sure that was a big moment yeah. uh, every year at camp. And unfortunately, not happening this year. It's really Detroit. cool. Yeah, it's really cool to see that because I, I told you, I don't feel like we really know who Justin Verlander no. is as a person so much. Uh, but his personality is starting to show a little bit more now, like we saw with the Mad Dog stuff. And you see these guys, and he's playing along with it. So maybe this change. Change of pace, this change of scenery is exactly what he needed to really come full bloom. Let's peel back all those layers of his onion, and now he's a shining star. Yeah, I think you get a little bit of confidence too once you get that World Series ring. Got some bling on your finger. That's he's got fair. two two blings. It's pretty nice. Married and world champ. Yeah, that's right. All right, uh, question of the day. Tell us why we should love your team. Yes. All right. Let's start with. Vinny, gotta love the Yankees. We had a very exciting and overachieving 2017 with one of the most lethal lineups in baseball and great bullpen. How can one not love to watch this exciting team unless you're from Boston, of course? Ah, yes, that's for sure. Or if you're a Houston Astro now because there's a little bit of bad blood brewing yes. between these two teams. I just heard the Taylor Swift song play in my head when you said that. Mm -hmm. Now we got bad blood. Okay, Lawrence, you should love my team, the Astros, mm -hmm. because the lineup is stacked. What do you think about the lineup? Yeah, I think the rotation is pretty stacked, too. Yeah. I think you got a lot going on there in Houston, for sure. All right, Karina said, you should love the Red Sox because they have the perfect proportions. Uh, <laughs> proportions, I read that right. Um, awesome Latins, the best veterans, and the brightest rookies, and I like red. Okay, sure. I, I like all of that. I think also, you know, it's going to be interesting. I'm going to love to see this rotation hopefully live yeah. up to their potential. That's the one thing that I'm hoping to see this That's year. That's right. That's right. Uh, okay, me. St. Louis is a medium-sized market where you can watch some of baseball's best. They've won a gajillion, not quite as many, championships as the Yankees. But you can also eat toasted raviolis. And everyone who passes you on the street will be like, how's your dog? I know he was in surgery, and you don't even know that person. So we're really nice. We know our baseball. Yadier Molina. Oh, and Tommy Pham, the guy that you love, predicted to uh, do pretty well this season. You can go out and watch fireworks. Oh, yeah, and Marcelo Zuna. He's out there, too. Yeah, I was going to say, two words, Yadier Molina. Yeah. That's something to love about that Cardinals team, for sure. That'll sell How about you. the Nationals? There's so much to love about this Nationals team. Tell me, tell me. Our starting pitcher has two different colored eyes. What? <laughs> this is amazing. Bryce and he wrote you a Valentine. That's right. And he wrote me a Valentine. So, of course, uh, we got to send some love back. Uh, uh, you know, Bryce Harper does all kinds of crazy things with his hair. And this is his walk year. So, this is the year. All the pressure is on the Nationals this year uh, to get it done. So, heart racing right now. Love them before. 
before uh, they leave you, and that's kind of uh, <laughs> that's the, the theme, theme for today. <laughs> It's a good theme. That's it. Don't ever leave me. Uh, final yes. stories here. Uh, we saw that Claire, who was a huge Brewers fan member, reached out to all of the yes. Brewers players and was like, buy uh, uh, Girl Scout cookies from me. And so a bunch of them did. They did. Yeah. Our friend Brett Phillips, look at this guy. How many boxes? One, two, three, four, five, six. Looks like eight, nine boxes that he has here. And what's... What's better than a cookie to celebrate Valentine's Day? Exactly. They arrived on the perfect special day and special delivery. Um, as he says there, Thin Mints are so good in the freezer, by the way. Yes, 100%. You eat them cold. Yes. It's like only the, the only way you can eat them. Do you think he's going to share those cookies with his teammates? I think he either shares them or they get stolen from him real quick. Here's the better question. When do you think he eats his last box? Tomorrow? Do you think he finishes all his boxes today? No, you got to pace yourself all through spring training. All right. Those are the only boxes you have for the whole year. You can't order more randomly. Like, I know, that's the thing. Soon. And you know what's the worst part is when you don't know what's your last cookie. You know when you reach in the bag of, some, of the chocolate that you love and it's your last piece and you didn't know it? Yeah, wow, you, know you are really missing chocolate and you are only one day into giving it up. Not even a day. Yikes. You got 12 hours. All right, uh, if you are a Royals fan looking to treat someone real well on this Valentine's Day, why not send them an awesome Valentine that the Royals came up with? These are pretty cute. Oh, I love this. Slugger, let me steal your heart. Would you Would you uh, like receiving this, Lex? Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. The only thing about Slugger is um, it's got an interesting crown head that yeah. uh, I'm still trying to figure oh, out. Oh, right, the crown's attached to the head. What about Whit Merrifield? Whit you? <laughs> Anything is possible. <laughs> That's actually yes. one of my favorite ones. This is great. With you. Man, I'm going to print this out and give it to a stranger. Okay, last one. Sal Perez, fan favorite. Happy Valentine's Day. I'm going to go ahead and advise against giving these to oh. strangers. Okay. Give them to people you love and that you know. Okay. Unless you want something bad to happen to you. <laughs> All right. I don't want that. We're going to keep it love and, and friendly here on the show. Happy Valentine's Day, Danny. Happy Valentine's Day. All right, love you. And love, love you. everyone. Thank you so much for watching us here today on uh, Valentine's Day and on MLB.com. We're going to do the it's all over again tomorrow, same time, 1225 Live. Make sure you join us. And big thanks to Richard Justice for joining us today. Uh, one of the best, one of the greatest. And appreciate that Valentine's as well, Richard. Everyone enjoy your evening, and we'll see you tomorrow.